Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last seeds of Europe, in which I'm your host, Mr. Call Me Lover, in which right now we are actually at war with Samara. Um, they actually went to war with us, but they're not doing so well right now. They've lost quite a few guys, and we're doing kind of okay, but we're formalizing our claims. Our enemies in the Revolutionary Front call us secessionists and traitors. The Tsar and Vyatka and his cronies dismiss us as a sect of Karklik. Others use the official name of the Komi Republic, seeing as a mere local curiosity, standing in the project of uniting Western Russia. Those names will be relegated to the past. Our government prepares a new delegation or declaration, announcing that we alone have the legitimacy to rule all of Russia as the Russian Republic. All of our institutions are to change to, to reflect this, territory occupied by our military will be merely territory returning to a rightful rule. Dem diplomatic annexations will be undertaken under the auspices of bringing a rogue provincial governors and usurpers back under the fold of their born Russian Republic. Our regional rivals are not likely to take this seriously. As such, we must be ready to prove our claims through force of arms or through the silver tongue of our diplomats. Nevertheless, the rules should know that the Russian Republic killed by the Bolsheviks is back, in which every neighbor country gets minus 5% war support, which is great and new election cycles. And, I, like, at this point, like, I they, I looked over, tabbed over, and Samara went to war with us because they literally did every single focus that they could do, and the only focus left they could do is go to war with us. So, that's why we are technically, I think, in a defensive war? Yeah, we are. We're in a defensive war, so go figure. But new election cycles. Now that the Republic's bases are strong and secure, it's time to turn a new leaf. New elections are taking place in the rationalized and cleansed political arena, which, which will be scheduled. It is perhaps a risky move to entrust the fate of our project to its citizens. No riskier, however, than ruling in content of majority to further the end of small political cliques like our enemies in the far left and far right intended to do. Our new electoral cycles is set to hold elections around the time our army and diplomatic service is set to have reunited many regions of Western Russia. Holding an election in freshly annexed or liberated territory must be difficult. But through this new, but through this, our new citizens will see that our commitment to democratic ideals. Nice. And got more stability too. Awesome. And now we shall do prepare industrial preparedness. Um, I think I read this one yesterday, I believe. Yeah, if you want to read this again, please go right ahead. But we will go ahead and read Secure Operational Integrity. Operational Integrity seeks to gather men, methods of doing, and material into a unified whole. Mechanized tactics cannot exist without supply and logistical regiments. Once in the field, tanks and vehicles are vulnerable to aerial attacks, requiring aerial support of our own. The development of costly vehicles and their experienced operators relies on the assumption that neither men nor material are in danger of destruction. Thus, any deployment is also requires an intel core. Operational Integrity is thus a complex system of simple parts brought together to perform critical tasks. Our military, our soldiers, and generals have integrated every lesson of past conflicts into a new way of doing things. Long before tank rolls out of our new factories, its purpose is well understood by our military. Our enemy shall learn to fear this oneness of purpose and action. Get three 75% research bonus for land auction. Too bad we're almost done with it. Oh well. Oh, did we win? Oh, we won! Yay, we won. I didn't even realize it. Um, you know what? Let's focus our focus tree. Finish our focus tree first, and then we'll form the Western Russian Republic group here. And we're still scavenging for loot. Can I... Can we beat anybody for this stuff? I'd love to raid them some more, but yeah, let's get through all this stuff first. Plan Brown, because getting all this stuff will be really nice to get as well. So, new capital, getting civvies and such. Even though it does stunt us slightly in terms of trying to get more stuff done, but eh, it's all right. Hmm. Can't raid, huh? That kind of sucks. I'll be honest. Kind of does suck. But we got time. Let's train. Let's get better. And eventually, I do want to make some 40 combo with divisions, even though we have only 18 army XP, which isn't great, but. Oh well. Plan Brown. If you wonder about Plan Brown, please go right ahead. Consolidating our Republic. Well, military and diplomatic conquest of the shattered lands of the Western Russian, or Western Russia, is all well and good. We must not forget the greater civilian and bureaucratic apparatus that we must establish over our new lands. With West Russia now under our control, the time is coming to begin the consolidation of the Republic, running censuses, ensuring that our institutions can handle our new populations, setting up supply lines, installing local leaders, and the thousand other tasks needed to set up a sustainable state. Absolutely. Uh, we got one more here. What was this one? I was recording more stuff, and we're actually just building right now, too, so. Plan Brown is good. Uh, do 70%, there you go. Because if we go to the next stage immediately, we're going to get hit by bureaucratic reforms needed and is like overextended administration, so. I don't really feel bad about waiting. So we can build a little bit, at least right now. But, faith in democracy. Outside of the border of Republic under Karansky, Russia had never known true democracy of the sort that we wish to deliver to these people. Understandably and unexpectedly, the people are nervous and confused as polling booths are elected, many peasants stay home or attempt to submit, submit blank ballots, fearful of the watchful eyes of the no longer existent NKVD. This will not do. We must enact a comprehensive program of democratic education, as well as communicate to the people well and truly what our goals and principles are. Democracy must stem from the people and may never bloom if the people do not have faith. Activate the factories. We get five more cities, which is great. 
Across the Republic, factories and other works of technological skill lie unused and unrepaired for a lack of expertise needed to run them. We must restore them at once, and soon the peoples of the Republic will be able to enjoy the prosperity that an industrialized economy shall bring. Cars once more shall roam the roads of Russia, and our army shall be furnished with matching rifles, and our grand city's streets will be lit with constant incandescent electrical glow by the Iron Governor. Um, that's the rising star indeed, okay. With the recent integration of Ninsi Novgorod, formerly known as Gorky, into the Republic, it was considered essential to establish a legitimate governance with both within within both it and the surrounding region. Elections for all positions, legislative and executive, were therefore announced and subsequently held, although many races were competitive, one in particular. <clears throat> uh, the governor's was not. Konstantin Ratushev, a local engineer and industrialist, was notable for his, and notable for his long standing support of it and advocacy for broadly liberal policies, won by considerable margin. Katushev, who entered the regional political sphere as soon as he was able, quickly negotiated with and secured the endorsement of the SMR, commonly known as the Young Reformers, and began proclaiming their general position to the electorate, proving himself to be an exceptionally skilled political organizer. He quickly established both a robust and rapidly expanding political infrastructure, greatly expanding the local awareness of and support for democratic ideals. This infrastructure proved an insurmountable challenge for his opponents, as though several other campaigns outspent Katushev. By a considerable margin, none were able to significantly challenge the increasing momentum displayed by his own. Experts agree that the Iron Governor, as he has been increasingly referred to, is likely to leverage the infrastructure in order to further establish Ninsi Novgorod as a stronghold both for the reformers and for their political adherents. A rising star, quite indeed. And activate the factories and get the peasants on board as well. We'll do that one too. A center capital eventually and a West Russian census for even more manpower. And slightly decreased coin time, which is going to be super essential when we go to war with these guys. But we do have some comms to go through as well. But let's get through this one first. We have how many days left? 35 day focuses take so long to do, man. And then we'll have to go to war with Onega and all them. So if you'd like to do about better industrial equipment, please go ahead. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yes. You gotta be careful with manpower loss, but still. Um, get the peasants on board. The final, most crucial part of establishing the new republic is securing our stores of food and setting up systems through which the peasantry may be able to once more prosper. For many years, many within the republic, especially those in the frozen north, have struggled under the weight of food insecurity, poor soil, and bad weather. With the fertile lands of the south once more attained, we are now able and free to organize a better arrangement between the peasantry and our workers, ensuring that all may prosper and be nourished by the republic's golden wheat. And equipment, yes. Despite only having been elected a few months ago, Alexander Yakovlev, a fresh deputy of the DSMP, has once has made himself known as influential political op operator, both within and without the party. He's been instrumental in the Democratic Front in helping ensure party loyalty among deputies coming from the former front and elsewhere. While technically coming from a new territory, Yakovlev has been succeeding in straddling the line between being associated either with the party establishment in Siktivkar or the frontier, making himself out as a possible unifier in the Young Republic. However, his desire for compromise extends only so far as many on the right of the DSNP are well aware. Yakovlev's public criticism of those in his own party who have betrayed our socialist roots has made him popular among the leftists in Komi. While his economic policies are far from radical in Russia, his forcefulness in such criticism has made him since, since a prominent member of the left of his party. While still young and inexperienced in the ways of the government, it is expected among the party establishment that he will do great things, a man with vision and principles. Yeah, we won't get the peasants on board. Yeah, ac getting better agriculture will be really, really good, even though we're actually doing really well with it. Eight, that should go up pretty soon. And this is at 119, which is not too bad either, so. We've got a lot of social democracy here, too, under Leonid Katoronovich. Liberal democracy, of course. We've got Svetlana Stalina. We've got Power Vacuum, Power Vacuum, and uh, Konstantin Badenov. Cool. And uh, the West Russian census. <coughs> Russia. That's a big place, and while we do not own anywhere near all of it, our republic occupies a significant portion of the former USSR's landmass. The teeming multitudes of people across our lands have not yet been counted or audited in order for our democratic institutions and basic social services to have a chance of working at all. We must make a detailed census of our population. Census takers, many accompanied by armed police, will be dispatched from regional centers in order to alleviate this issue immediately. Look at that. We already built up some of them cities already. Nice. Uh, go 60. Oh, go 100. Holy crap. Yeah, go 100. Keep building, building, building. How many factories do we have? 68 was not too bad. Uh, get the peasants on board. And then, a center capital. Siktivkar, the capital of our estimable republic, has served us well in a storied and has a storied back history as the most important city we have possessed in the dark days of our origin. However, a dilemma faces the government, one that is a simple matter of infrastructure, housing, and facilities which wish to administer all of Russia. The cities of Vyatka and Samara, now that they are cleansed of Tsarist and fascist influence, respectively, have both been submitted as possible new capitals for the republic. While Siktivkar is well law, the time may very well come to move to more grandiose housing. Now, I honestly can't remember which way we're going to go, but we'll see what happens. Because scams for more loot, but at this point, that's we're so 
close to finishing this off, it doesn't really matter. We only have one, and we can't raid other people, which I want to do badly. <sighs> I would love to raid other people, but... Oh, well. Hey, we're honestly looking not too bad here. Like, I, this is pretty good. Keep building, building, building. As these guys are not... T-Man is probably going to try to unite these guys, but Svetlosk... I don't know, Mr. Mario here might be doing okay, but you never know. You just never know. Mr. Mario. Three days left. Three days. Uh, we'll get this one done first. Why not? Civilian construction. It's already 65. We'll probably unify all this area by 66. So, civilian construction three. Yes, please. A center capital. Now, 15 is not bad, but... The party machine, as was previously predicted by experts, the continued efforts of the SMR line, Iron Governor Konstantin Katuchev, to establish Ninsi Novgorod as a bastion of... Liberal idealism has shown results. Once again, demonstrating a profound talent for organization, Katushev quickly moved following his election to identify local allies, particularly among those who carefully concealed democratic leanings under the former regime and then appoint them to politically influential positions. Although many of these allies have been criticized by Katushev's opponents as inexperienced and eccentric, counting among their number of political no novices from numerous menial careers, the inclusion is one Katushev the support of many within the city. While tirelessly working to continuously further expand the political infrastructure established during his election campaign, Katushev has begun to apply that infrastructure support of the candidacy of other SMR prospects. Indeed, many of the city's National Assembly districts are now held by SMR deputies, and experts predict that the degree of support extended by Katushev's machine is such that they will, are unlikely to be unseated by their many opponents anytime soon. Under Katushev, Ninsi Novgorod's quickly, very quickly become a political bastion of the young reformers, and the influence of this fact on the political landscape of the Republic as a whole is expected to grow in the months and years ahead. A beacon of liberalism. And in a few days, we're going to switch out and uh, get a new focus tree, which would be great, great, great. Because I really don't like getting overextended administration, even though getting another research slot is highly, highly recommended. Build, build, nice. And here we go, the Western Russian Free Republic. <sighs> Look at that, beautiful. Thankfully, it's a democracy for now. Cool. And do we have anything here? Oh, oh, not yet, because we can request finished negotiations. Uh, let's see what happens. Because we need to do, oh, oh, let's just do all this stuff too, anyways. Uh, work of training, construction, advanced development studies, and eh, we'll wait. Uh, poverty will get better. Let's see. Research facilities, academic base, industrial. This is why I wanted to do this one as fast as possible. Army professionalism. That one's okay. Uh, we could use more stability. We could use more war sport, actually. But infrastructure would not be bad. You know you know what? Popularity of radical ideology shall decrease. There you go. Was that smart to do? I don't know about that, but whatever. Spend. Build as fast as you possibly can. We're not going to cut this down either because we don't need to. But election year. The people of Russia are gearing up for election season. An idea once unthinkable scant decades before now is up to the Russian people to decide the fate of their nation and their leaders. Political parties, both big and small, are preparing their supporters and their backers across the nation. Thousands of volunteers, campaign staff, and candidates make ready to depart to the rallies. Tours, speeches, and debates that will dominate the headlines for the coming months. Candidates will be scrutinized, issues debated, and at the end, millions of voters will be able to make their voices heard by the powers that be. DSMP. SMR, PSD. SMR. I'm probably going to go with the SMR because he's the guy who's leading it, right? So, building better tomorrow. A new capital. Even in our most turbulent and uncertain times, it's unlikely that someone could imagine the Siktivkar, a mid-sized city at the entrance to the rear of Russia, could become a center of the Russian Republican. Statehood and a small, if shining gleam in the devastating country. Surviving its troubled translation or transition to democracy and the attacks from the radicals of all sides, Siktivkar provided itself a special spot in the Russian history. As some political workers of the Republic developed Senate manuality towards a city with which they went through the hardest challenges in their lives, it is time to admit, however, that in the light of our current strategy, Siktivkar no longer fits as a center of the democratic Russian advancement. It is far too from the core of communications in West Russia, and too close to hostile forces. It has therefore been proposed to move the capital to Vyatka, the former residence of the short-lived rule of the self-proclaimed emperor. In order to address these issues, however, many within the government hold that the capital should, despite all the unknown problems, remain in Siktivkar. This is both for reasons of administrative continuity, as well as to honor its new history and to further cement the unique identity our nation. Both options have merit. It is, however, in the end, the president's decision whether to move the seat of the capital or the seat of the government or not. Stability. Holy crap. Well, wow. Uh, exceptional, huh? SMR seems pretty weak everywhere. Significant over down here, though. Uh, I'm not sure the population-wise. I'm going to go to Central Russia. So we'll see. Exceptional is kind of... I don't like that. Because, I mean, they were reds. And social democracy is probably as close as the thing they want to get to as possible as well. But still. Um, we'll see what happens. If you like to read about better agricultural methods, please go right ahead. 
Nice. I do want to invade them, but since we're democratic, we'll try to negotiate with them first. Polling update. Nice. If you want to buy that, please go ahead. Let's see what the Finns say. Um, we're just Central Russia, so we're so somewhat weak-ish. Hope we win. Finland requests our terms. The Finns are somewhat receptive to talks. Our ambassador informs us that Helsinki has agreed to high-level diplomatic conferences between our two nations. It's pleasing that the Finns have not done anything rash and have agreed at least to give us some time to make demands. Some cynics in our government suspect Helsinki of merely stalling for time in order of full mobilization. The fact remains that war can be avoided. Before anything else, however, Helsinki wants to know our terms. Onega must be returned to us. Its population freed from the genocidal duty for Finland. That much is, of course, essential. This does not mean, however, that the Russo-Finnish frontier should remain a dagger pointed at Finland's heart. We, should, we could simply demilitarize Onega and sign a non aggression pact for the foreseeable future. The fans would probably accept such a deal, and Helsinki would likely see it as too good to be true. Thus, a better deal will be a return of Onega in full, with the troops in the region. Eastern Karelia will also be integrated to Russia as an autonomous region, with the Finns granted an open border in the region. This would return to us the Arctic port of Murmansk, southwestern Karelia, and its critical port, city port of Vyborg, of Vipuri, and Finnish. We'll stay under Helsinki's control, demilitarized zones, and non aggression treaties will follow, preventing any future wars between our peoples. Of Finns, of, of course, we can just demand it all. No matter how attached the Finns are to Vyborg and southwestern Karelia, their paltry army cannot save them for long. Onega's ramshackle mob of conscripts will not slow us for long, and they choose to fight their countrymen at all. The Finns will agree to our demands for Onega and all of Karelia, or they will pay for their arrogance. We want everything. Like, we go big or go home. Staying put. The sunrise had just arrived when he uh, arrived at the Vicheda guy's banks. As golden rays illuminating the water in the warm glow, it felt appropriate, a new beginning of sorts. Lighting a cigarette, the man turned to look at the city behind him. Sikhtiv carted through the Republic well during his time as capital, and it appeared that it would continue to do so for so many more years to come. The legacy of parallel military violence, of government corruption, fascist commies lurking in the shadows, overcome and replaced with democratic governance and effective leadership, for the time being at least. The man couldn't help but wonder if he was staying in Sikhtiv car was the right choice, a lost opportunity. Perhaps it would have been better to make a clean break from the cutthroat politics and corruption that were once a staple of the capital. Taking a drag from a cigarette, he supposed only time would tell, putting out a smoke. The man walked back toward the city as the dawning sun rose over the horizon. A new beginning. Hope we do well, though. They deny a full demand for Karelia. The Finnish negotiators have given, uh, give, been given our demands and have issued their response. They accuse us of plotting to destroy the Finnish nation and to dismember them by peaceful means. The Pura, as they say, as well as Karelia, is rightfully Finnish and shall not be controlled by our government, which they claim has proven to be over revanchist and a p threat to peace. With all this, it is all hope for a sentiment has ended. There is not to be a peaceful solution to the Karelian question. Rather, the most this must be settled by force of arms. Let our tanks take the field, and the spoils go to the victor, to war. They chose their fate. And no matter what happens, we will go in as harshly as possible. And... Now what? We'll spend more. The General Staff Assembles. Although Negan conscripts have been busy on the borderline, digging the trenches and sitting to the four positions ever since we've left the peace docks, so Negans had followed their master's bidding and begun preparing for all war. It is regrettable that we must fight our Russian brothers, but the Finns' arrogance has brought this upon themselves. Uh, their general staff, our general staff's analysis, predicts a rapid collapse of the Onega militia beyond them. Uh, the lakes Onega and Lagoda to create checkpoints that the Finns intend to defend bitterly. A rapid breakthrough followed by a push into Eastern Karelia will bring the Finns to their knees before they fully mobilize. War it is, then. Which sucks, but hopefully we can do okay. Fighting, getting over that initial riverbank is going to be kind of god-awful, but after that, it should do okay. Three. Actually, do we have more planes here? Two. Oh, yeah, we do. One-ish. And here we go. And you're going to force the attack just so we can get through there. we got to force it over. Good. And you guys go here immediately next. Oh, we're all going to lose that one division. My bad. Oh, well. Caffeine flow? I don't really care how many divisions we lose. Because they will all have to die in the end. So we've lost 9,000 already. So be it. Take Onega. Come on. Take it. Take it for the love of God. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. There we go. I got him. Screw these fins. Go, go, go. 
Take as much territory as you can, possibly first, and democracy in Russia. With our liberation of the West, we are closer than ever to realizing the dream of the February Revolution. A truly democratic Russia, now that we've governed West Russia and have transcended the simple borders of the old Kumi Republic, it's time to hold the West Russian Free Republic's first official elections for many West Russians. This will be the first free election. They are excited to head to the polls. The three parties have thrown their hats into the ring. The Democratic Socialist DSMP, headed by Leonid Kantanarovich, the centrist PSD under Svetlana Stalin, and the Liberal SMR fielding Alexei Kosygin. The 65 elections are sure to be a close race. And whoever wins will decide the fate of West Russia for four more years. The race is on. Nice. The PSD is very significant in a lot of places. I, I don't like. Um, we should still be able to win here. Forty-five percent. Forty-five percent is still pretty good. Um, campaign and Trans Volga, maybe. Hmm. Arctic Russia. Trans Volga, maybe. Go, 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 go. My goal is to get over every single river as fast as possible, if, if possible. Go, go, go. Seriously, you gotta keep going. You're not gonna stop here. Did we seriously get encircled here? Bro. You've got to geo, geo. There you go, nice, we got over the river. Go, 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 flood him, flood him, flood him. Nice. Come on, motorized, go faster than this, you gotta go faster. Uh, the DSMP campaign if you want to build that, let's go ahead, as well as this one, as well as that one too. As well as the PSD, platform platform for modern Russia, and then appeal to force, as well as the SMR campaign. The Kumi Republic began with a dream, a dream that one day all Russia will be one, democratic and free. A dream that prosperity would abound from Murmansk to Magadan, not because it was planned by party bureaucrats, but because Russia's leaders trusted its people to build it themselves. Now that the Kumi Republic has been transcended by the West Russian Free Republic, we can shed the shackles of the old center bloc that kept the dream down. Alexei Kosygin and the SMR alone will make that dream come true. The SMR will get a head start on their election campaign. Kosygin will crisscross the Western Russian Free Republic, giving speeches, promoting his beautiful vision of liberty and prosperity. As many West Russians will be choosing him for the first time, this campaign will be crucial for securing their votes. Nope. Hey, you're the one who said you want this. The fate of Onega's generals. Uh, if you want to read about that one, please go ahead. I've read this one before, so I don't want to read it again. Uh, honestly, let them serve their time. Just because they refused, you know, our generous offer. Sports Robbie, if you want to read about that one too, please go ahead as well. Come on, beat him up, beat him up. Come on, get there, get there, get there, get there, get there. Come on. Thank God. Now go down here, kill these two divisions off. They killed off an entire division earlier, so... There's literally no peace between us and them, so... We'll go Arctic pressure this time. And then... Appeal to the youth. You Russian students are the builders of a new tomorrow. The DSMP who only cares for men who... Who swing a wrench, and the PSD chides you for following your elders. And the same elders who let our nation fall to the Germans, I have a different message, dear youth. Russia needs you. It needs your creativity. It needs your diligence to show the diligence you show in your studies. It needs your mastery in the arts and sciences. Most of all, it needs your courage to stand up to the old failures and create new successes. And SMR Russia is your Russia, and it'll be the Russia of your grandchildren when you retire to a life of comfort and culture. Kosygin will launch a speaking tour across the Western Russian Free Republic's universities. He'll campaign hard for the youthful. While the youth may seem an odd choice for support base, their dedication to him now will likely last their whole lives. Kosygin is nothing if not poor thinking, and this should help us give an edge in the 1966 elections, of course. Hey, with the beginning of the campaigns, the SMRs put a great deal to come out on top in the elections. Promising reform and liberalization, the Union of Young Reformers is appealing to all who wish for a developed or advanced Russia. Intellectuals, especially a flock to the SMR, attracted to the ideas of education reform and investments into the sciences. With this, the SMRs begin to promise to construct more schools and universities, as well as funding education and science programs. The SMR is also promoting radical new ideas to transform the backwards Russian economy into a modern one. Let's hope that at least they are good ideas. How many more fans need to die, Finland? How many more need to die? Nice, just keep overrunning them. 
I don't think I have enough divisions to hold the line now. Which is great. A blueprint for the future. Kosygin is a man with a plan. He's always was, since he saved the Russian industry during the war by organizing the eastward evacuation, and now he's going to save Western Russia, Free Republic, now with his extensive reforms. He will unveil to all the people of West Russia his blueprint for the future. The SMR will publish their platform across the Western Russian Free Republic. It will detail their affirmative action plans for Russia's women and ethnic minorities, as well as their blueprint for expanding private enterprise to increase economic growth. While the platform will hold the socialist roots of the SMR, it will portray them as focused first and foremost on the personal liberty and prosperity of every West Russian. This message should resonate with the first with electorate, many of whom will have their first taste of real, real freedom. I want to go back to Central Russia, maybe. Central Russia. Oh, where did their divisions go? Who cares? Kill them all off. Oh, college visit. Kazan's Federal University, a place to study the sciences, my friends. It made sense for Alexei Kosygin then to visit. Surely he would get an outpouring of support from every member of the university. From the size of the crowd, it looked like he was right. Friends, students of the sciences, thank you for inviting me to your grand university. I have a very important message for you. Russia needs all of your help. Your intelligence, creativity, and determination will decide the future of your country. The Union of Young Reformers is working towards a developed and modern Russia. I promise that together we can lead Russia into a new age. The SMR will fund your projects, dreams, jobs. You will be the ones transforming Russia, helping the, its economy, sciences, and its people. A smart, modern Russia can be built out of nothing. And what will you do to help Russia? What will you do to make your dreams come true? The incredible crowd, encompassing most of the university, went wild with excitement. They were Russia's future. Why would the SMR let them down? Looks like kosygin has got the student vote. 94,000 dead, Finland. Is this what you wanted? Is this what you really, really flippin' wanted? Of course it is. A people's mandate. Campaigning season is over, and the Western Russian Free Republic is heading to the polls. Each candidate put up a good fight, and analysis see this election as anyone's game. Russians will soon gather around the radio sets to hear the final tallies and find out who will lead their nation for the next five whole years. Katarovich's Democratic Socialist, Stalinist Stability Mind Eccentrist, or Kosygin's Liberal Democrats. Many will be elated by the results, and others dismayed. Yet one thing we can all agree on is that a free and fair election was finally held across West Russia, a triumph in a land that was never known a peaceful transition of power. No matter who wins the most votes, democracy is won in the Western Republic, Western Russian Free Republic. Oh, wunderbar. I'm sorry, I should have said if you wanted to read that. Keep going on for now, though. We've only killed off 102,000, well, they killed off like 25,000 of us, but whatever. Traitors, all of them. Well, that should help us help us uh, get him elected, right? Winning wars helps people get elected, right? Ah, yes. The SMR platform. Wishing to spread more of the platform, of course. The SMR has decided to send out pamphlets to ad advertise their platform. Including the dreams and ideas of a modern developed Russia, the pamphlet hopes to attract voters who wish for a better life, escaping from poverty and living in a modern lifestyle. In the pamphlet, the SMR promises to totally transform Russia during its term. Funding, research funding is also a major stance taken by the party, hoping that new technologies will modernize the country. This has also begun to gain the interest of everyday Russians, intrigued by new technologies that could make their lives easier. The Union of Young Reformers also includes ideas from other parties, including social equality and workers' benefits. SMR hopes to create a full market economy and bring prosperity to all Russians. Connections can be easily made to the American system if it works for them. The SMR thinks it will surely work for Russia. Russia could definitely use with some prosperity. We've had one South African war. How about a second? I'm thinking yes. And we're going to try to build as much as we possibly can. Ah, Oslin, yes, please. Hmm. How's Central Region doing? Very strong in some areas. Do one more time. Ah, the people's mandate, my friends. The people have spoken it somewhat. Ah, uh, yes. South Africa. Beautiful. I love it. That almost looks like old Russia down there. Completely broken and destroyed. I think up next we'll do Arctic Russia, maybe? Maybe not. Oh, the 66th election. Look at that. Following months of debates, speeches, politic politicking, and campaigning, the big day has finally arrived. As volunteers across the nation begin opening voting booths and accounting ballots, candidates and voters sit around radios and street corners to, sweet, to await the results. Amidst the many elections for mayors, governors, and other elected bodies, the main focus rests on the general election and on who will lead Russia through the coming years. All, as votes are tallied and ballots counted, it is clear the winner of the 66th election is let the best candidate win. Well, how much utility do we have? Okay, we don't have enough for this, so we're going to duplicate you and make you guys 40s, because we have enough army XP for this, so. Because 40s, we're going to 100% need 40s, so. 
Because when we go to war with Germany, we're definitely going to need them. Uh, actually, it's like that. Let's remove you. There you go, 40. It doesn't look pretty, but whatever. Yeah, that's not bad. 3, 6. 6 plus 3 is 9. 9 plus 4. 13, 3, yeah. 13, oh, 15, 16, yeah. Good. Sorry. My counting apparently has been a little bit off. Uh, you know what? Just spam it out. The Union of Young Reformers elected. The votes have been tallied. The campaigning has ceased, being the Republic's first presidential election since stabilizing its democracy. High voter turnout and general optimism were reported amongst the populace. In the end, Alexei Kosygin's Union of Young Reformers won the election, and the newly elected president gave a passionate inaugural address in front of the National Assembly. The most liberal of the Republic's main three parties, the SMR, has always pushed for free market reforms and economic liberalization. Their critics may call them urbanites out of touch with the common man, but clearly the voters disagree. The SMR has already published numerous projects they have planned to implement if elected. And many voters report that being excited to see the SMR's plans actually put into action. In the end, all that matters to the most is that the Republic has survived, and under the SMR, it shall thrive. The people have spoken. Springtime, the Russian economy. Ooh, I'd love to do that, but... Mm, ooh, that's not bad. Ooh, that's really not bad. Educated populace. There's so much I want to do here, man. Russian Republican Army. We do need to get rid of, like... Increases voter turnout, huh? Reduces administrative strain. Yeah, that's pretty bad. We want to get rid of that pretty quickly. But if we can build this faster? That's not bad, but... Mm. Springtime in Russia. The people of the Republic have spoken, SMR, standing for liberty, economic freedom, and a government of common sense has been elected. Our mandate has been given to us freely and fairly through majority rather than through the state politicking of the old Komi Republic. The newly inaugurated President Kostichin has announced his intention to move ahead at once. Now that we're no longer having to worry about the threat of paramilitaries, the business of governance can be carried out as it would be in any modern democracy. The long winter of discontent has ended, and freedom blooms anew from the soil of the motherland. The Viola Platform. Um... Hmm. Platform for these guys. Ah, platform for reform, why not? Russia and reform are sadly two words that have never gone well together. Historically, reform has been hated for both, for going too far and not going far enough. Foreigners and often observe that most Russians would rather indulge in murder than allow peaceful reform to occur under any circumstances. We must agree somewhat. Reform is all about compromise and gradual change. It offends both ends of the political spectrum and provides a ready target for rabble-rousers. Nevertheless, we must press forth in the line with the principles. The people have shown their maturity and commitment to reform by electing SMR. We must not disappoint them. Cultural and social reform are both on the table and ready to be presented to the assembly. Apologies for speaking somewhat fast, too, so. Just the way I naturally speak. Beautiful. Exit polls, thank you very much. There, we can still campaign in Arctic Russia, too. Um, the first election, my friends. And we'll close out of this because it's not 69 yet. Uh, I wish we could get do some more social development stuff, but all eyes were on Denis Al Alamov. The election for the newly established city government in Kazan had failed to produce an outright majority for any, any of the parties in contention, and it was his role as election supervisor to answer the questions on what would happen next. No, my friend, there will not be a new election. In fact, there is no provision that allows it. The new elected councillors will sit for the full four years. He answered to an un in unaccented tata. The first half hour was spent making assurances that the failure to produce a majority was not due to the electorate doing something wrong. Somehow, they were starting to get somewhere. Since no party can command the council by themselves, they will have to work together. Many cities already do this. Sometimes they have stable alliances that rule together. Sometimes the largest party builds different coalitions from issue to issue. Even President Kosygin has to listen to the other parties and work with them. He was optimistic that they could do it too. He expected the SMR, as the largest party, would form a coalition with either the DSNP or the regional voice of Tartary movement. Like the rest of Russia, Kazan would learn the, the ins and outs of party-based representation. Coalition government and opposition politics, an important lesson, and assist the republics. Neither the Empire nor the Bolsheviks ever showed much interest in improving the nation as a whole. If you wonder about the end of election season, please go ahead. Um, for them, Russia only needed investment in a few key areas, usually where it was relevant to the latest propag propagandized attempt to play catch up with the West. The notion of wide-reaching progress was entirely lost on them. To correct our course and become a truly modern state, we must take a more holistic approach to a nation well national well-being. We're not a top-down state ruled by decree, but a union of free and equal republics. None of our constituent republics, no matter their history or demographics, deserve to be left behind. So, the progress or programs of modernization and urbanization deployed or employed in our heartlands will be shared with our brothers' republics. The entire Russian family will be united in prosperity. Nice. Keep building, keep building, 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 building. Cultural exhibits? Um, 
Let's do a platform for unity, the foundation of a successful democracy is cooperation. While it might be nice to imagine everyone sharing our ideals, this isn't how people work. The diversity of race, creed, and class is mirrored in the diversity of thought within the minds of our citizens. The myoptic approach of the Bolsheviks, assuming that everyone can be swayed to the perfect ideology, must be dispensed with for the republic to remain strong and free. Uh, to demonstrate our good intentions, we shall enter into an alliance with one of the other major parties in the assembly. Both command substantial support from the populace, and the support would strengthen our mandate. The question is which? Which party would best suit our purposes, the rural social democratic PSD, or the labor-based democratic socialists of the DSMP? From oblast to nation, the political influence of Nizhny Novgorod, as one of the largest cities in Western Russia, and thus a source of a significant proportion of National uh, Assembly's deputies, has continued to grow, as it has influence as its iron governor, Konstantin Katushev. Katushev's now extensive political infrastructure and, consequently, his ability to mobilize support for the SMR within the region has led to other parties being all but shut out of its assembly delegation. Indeed, deputies from Katushev's domain now constitute a considerable portion of the entire Young Reformer Caucus, affecting the party's viewpoint as a whole. Recognizing this, the SMR has begun shifting more and more of its administrative organs other than those required in Siktivkar itself to the city. A corollary and to this shift in both caucus demographics and organization is the rapidly increasing influence of Katushev within the party on the national level. He's reportedly begun making suggestions on electoral and positional policy, and it's considered likely that the other figures within the SMR's senior leadership will be unable to resist them. Among oppositional party organizers, consensus has therefore been reached at the Katushev is to be considered a critical and ir near irreplaceable figure within the SMR, and has been identified as a prime candidate for the potential party leadership in the near future. The Iron Governor's influence grow. The Red Star. While a moderately fresh face in politics, the West Russian Free Republic's Alexander Yakovlev has made himself known as a man of the left in the People's Democratic Socialist Party. A powerful political operative known for its reformist and socialist tendencies, Yakovlev has gained a following among younger intellectuals, working class trade unionists, and citizens of the Free Front Territory, all of which have made him a powerful figure on the left wing of the party, once a freshman a deputy from Karyolevo. He has since raised his status as a popular figure among socialists and other leftists within the DSMP, much to the chagrin of the party's right wing. With his fiery criticism of the right DSMP's liberal economic policies and a firebrand desire to uplift the working class of this nation through a newfound humanistic, humanistic socialism, men expect Yakovlev to seek the presidency, although he has kept any hints of seeking the presidency, presidency to himself. It remains to be seen if Yakovlev's coalition can overcome the party establishment. An idealist is rare in Russia, but now, do we want to go with authoritarian Democrats or the Social Democrats? Authoritarian Democrats have a lot more support, while the these guys do not. Hmm. 10%, 30%. Uh, the Violet Platform, more popular so Social Democracy. Um, That would help weaken them a little bit. They would weaken us a little bit more, too, but... I don't want these guys to get too strong. We will go with the PSD... DS, DSNP. Huh. You know what? I think I'm going to go with this one. Because eventually we get more support in urban areas. Which we already should get, right? I could be wrong, though. Uh, we could go this shot, too. For the people. Um, hmm. In rural states, though. I don't want to boost them up too much, so I'll do the Violet Platform for now. Despite being marked by Voznesensky's legacy, the DSMP still commands a lot of respect and support of urban working class voters. Though more directly inclined towards socialism than ourselves, they are just as committed as we are to democracy. Working with them will show the urban working class that we are still dedicated to advancing the interests of the proletariat, even if we ta our take on socialism isn't quite what they like might like. And formally dubbed the Violet Platform, our alliance will be based on a promise to more actu actively pursue socialism. The more rightist elements of the SMR will not be pleased, but they'll come around eventually. We're still ultimately socialists, after all. It makes sense for us to join with a party that shares our end goals, even if, it means, even if our means differ. And for the worker. Hardline anti-democratic socialists never understood what the working class really needed. All that talk of fear and uncompromising ideology, what good did it ever do to the men and women who make a living on factory floors? A worker can't feed their family with populist ideals and workplace lectures. Both the SMR and DSMP understand that the workers want what really want. A safe, productive work environment, one without harsh conditions or threats to life and limb, better pay, hours, and safety regulations will lead to healthier, more efficient workplaces. We'll show the workers that one doesn't need to be a rabble-rousing demagogue to have their best interests at heart. Hatred surrounds. In a pop insective car, two unseemingly rem unremarkable men sat at a table, drinks in hand, with undistinguished appearances and relatively plain clothes. One would never suspect that either was a prominent politician. Nevertheless, they were exactly that. Uh, being Leonid Kantanovich and yes, Yevsai Lieberman, Though they favored different factions, both men had remained friends for over a decade, and the small differences in politics weren't about to change that now. They had little left besides each other, after all. A toast, Kantarovich declared joyously, to the freedom of Russia and the salvation of the Jewish people, looking around in alarm. Lieberman let out a breath 
When we realized that the pub was empty except for themselves and the staff, careful, Leonid, he hissed. Much as we've worked to heal Russia or its bigotry, many remain who will hate us for who we are. The brain the schoons of people of, like Shevelovich and Gumaleo still want our heads, to say nothing of the Reich, and the jackboot dogs. Hatred surrounds us, my friend, and it'll take a long time for it to cool. A small, sad smile on his face, Kantarovich shook his head. That is precisely why we must celebrate. We have saved at least part of Russia from itself, and in doing so, bought, brought the hated Reich a step closer to its demise. If we did not celebrate who we are in a situation like this, we may as well be dead as with so many of our people. His brow furrowing in worry, Lieberman locked eyes with Kantorovich and catching his attention. Maybe that's so, he admitted, with his expression troubled. Even still, I need you to promise me one thing. Don't get yourself killed. And how was our resources, or equipment? Artillery's quite bad. So we need more artillery. A lot more arty. I don't want to lower guns, because we're still going to need a lot of guns and anti-tank as well. Uh, lower the amount of tanks for now, because we don't need them as much. So, yeah. Got a lot on there, so... For the workers, my friends. For the workers, followed up with a show of cooperation. Even if it's not a formal coalition government, we have shown a commitment to democracy by cooperating with another political party. Some of our hardliners are yet to stop sulking and publicly give their blessing to this endeavor, but that doesn't matter. This exercise in goodwill has been a resounding success. None can question this act. Some critics have derided both parties involved, dismissing the joint effort as a token gesture. They don't understand that democracy is more complicated than they make it out to be. There are always negotiations to undertake, compromises to be made, yes. The fascists and communists might not have to worry about petty disagreements, but... Our freedom and happiness is more than worth that trifling cost. 50, 50, 50, 70s, really nice. 70s, 70s, 80s, ooh, 100, oh. Oh yes, oh yes, please. For the worker. A show of cooperation and keep spending so we can make more stuff. Um, what do we want to do? Cultural exhibits, freeness and fairness. Uh -huh. Well, it doesn't seem like this side really helps lower administrative strain yet, so... A platform for democracy. The cornerstone of democratic success is majority rule. Though both reactionaries and far-left vanguards as drive this idea as mob rule, there is no more clear survey of the people's desires in a free and open election. If the majority freely supports us, then the radicals have no grounds for the claims of elitism so often lobbed at liberal democrats. That the majority of voters reside in urban areas, the core support's basis for liberal ideals is irrelevant. Our popularity is perfectly natural, and we need no dirty tricks to explain our success. The notion that the votes of our support base are in Apparently of low value due to their sheer numbers is merely jealousy on the part of labor and conservative politicians. Resources. If you need a train, go right ahead. Show a compromise, a cooperation. Follow it up with what? Fairness and freedom? Let's do the survey of Republic, uh, Republic elections. When the, even a single voter is denied their fundamental rights, democracy suffers. It might not seem so at the time, but every step away from guaranteed universal suffrage is a step towards totalitarianism. For proper democracy, this will not do. Everyone, from the most hard done by a farmer to the wealthiest overnight, is of equal value in the democratic process. Neither the elitism of the far right nor the rabid classicism of the far left will benefit our republic. One nation, one vote, or one citizen, one vote. With anything less, can we truly call ourselves a democracy? Maybe, depending on who you ask. Yeah, we need, ooh, we need more casts, but yeah, definitely more artillery. Everything else is looking generally okay-ish. I do want some tanks as well eventually. We do have 20 combos over here. I Honestly, I'll probably just convert these guys to tanks, so. For now, become main battle tanks. We don't have that much army XP, so. There you go, something like that. I wish I could have changed that up, but that's fine for now. We do have a few tanks in reserve, so. Freedom and fairness. Though we've always tried our best, the Komi Republic was never able to do right by its minorities. Even the eponymous Komi were often systematically denied a voice by racist elements of the assembly. Now that Western Russia is on our banner, we have an entire republic of non-Russians. We're happy to have our brother to people living and working alongside us, but the republics are much younger and more fragile than ours. Unsavory types such as Vosnesiski have a vested interest in support us seeing their voters. And that's to say nothing of what radicals might get up to. President Kosygin has thus pledged to build, help build democratic institutions and carry out surveys of the minority republics so that the interests of all citizens are fairly, fairly represented. Keep building, building, building. We're not done yet. We're not, not even close to being done yet. And it's almost 67, so. Industry, finally. Yay. Industry. Labor. Yay. Learn from past mistakes. In truth, the Russia that we have begun to build here in the West is not the same nation extinguished by the Germans two decades ago. Nor is it a provisional republic or the empire. Our republic is something different, an entirely new nation born amidst the graves of its parents, appro appropriately. Our vision for Russia must be forward-thinking and idealistic. Past Russian states had their virtues, but all ultimately failed for a single reason. They refused to change. There was always some rigid ideological line to toe, some utopian obligation that could never be fulfilled. Our republic will not make the same mistakes. We are trying something new, focusing on the practical needs of the present rather than a future that exists only in the dreams of ideologues or a past that led Russia to destruction several times over. Just 
go and click on it all. Don't care. Get it all done. Cool. And towards a shiny future. It's never easy to move on. Russia has much to be proud of it in its past, but there's just as much about our history that is sordid and shameful. There was always someone waiting in the wings to lead us astray, away from the path that would have best served the people. Russia has been disappointed by its leaders time and time again. They've always wanted the same thing. A Russia that was an overlord of Eurasia, tolerated no dissent, and was feared by all over the world. It never worked. Fear always gave way to hate, and dissent can never be silenced. And our neighbors had never had cause to trust us. It's time to put away the dark dreams of Russia that was. Time to embrace the future of freedom and peace that was denied her for so, so very long ago. Poverty, foreign instructors. And now we're out of political power, which sucks. Because I do want to get some better industrial equipment, but it's going to have to wait, unfortunately. Followed up with cultural exhibits. Why not? Uh, Russia is home to more than just Russians. Dozens of ethno-cultural groups make up our great nation. Though the Russian supremacist attitudes of past governments have diminished that fact in the world's eyes. Even many Russian Slavs, steeped in their own culture, refuse to accept the diversity of our nation. To protect the heritage of our many peoples, President Kosygin has proposed the establishment of the All-Russian Heritage Committee, comprised of representatives from each republic, the ARHC, will direct funding for the museums, festivals, artwork, commissions, and so forth. When the world thinks of Russian culture, they should think of more than just icons and domed churches. Nice. 5.6 is not enough. Uh, keep making more civvies, man. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Let's do all these. Like, I don't even care at this point. Just do them all. We'll get them all done eventually. I'm not really worried about it, so. I might have missed one place, but whatever. Nice. Keep spending more for now. That's fine. <coughs> Excuse me. Heavy machinery, please. Thank you very much. Protect natural beauty, of course. The motherland has not been treated well by our children. The Tsars may have been incompetent in economic matters, but at least they were cap incapable of ruining the countryside. The Bolsheviks, obsessed with rapid industrialization and maximizing economic output, were a different story. The affairs of Bukharin's initiatives littered the Russian landscape, while open faced mines carved into hillsides, forests of smokestacks spewing suits skyward, the rivers clogged with industrial runoff. That's a sad sight, and one that no progressive nation should tolerate. If such practices continue, how long will it be until all of Russia looks like Caucasian? Caucasian. Proper protection should be established before we progress any further with our industrialization and urbanization programs. Though industrials and state industries alike will balk at stifling their expansion, it's a measure necessary for future generations to enjoy Russia as it should be. And uplift minority rights. Russia's national character is unfortunately tainted by its tendencies towards chauvinism and homogeneity. Minorities of all stripes have been mistreated for centuries, first by royalty, then by revolutionaries. It seems that without intervention, Russia is doomed to remain stuck in its backward, hateful ways. And I apologize for this real quick. We've got to do this. We've got to spend some money or right, stuff like that. We can't get rid of racism overnight, but we can make some important first steps. First, and most importantly, racial discrimination and hate speech must be outlawed so that everyone can live lives of fear, free of fear. Second, the autonomy of minority republics must be permanently enshrined in the Constitution. That is the only way to guarantee that a chauvinistic or chauvinist government will never again trample on the rights of minorities, which we lose political power, which sucks. We get more stability, but I don't know, man. I would prefer more political power than that, but whatever. And very good. Oh, the March of Progress. Very good. <clears throat> Progress has never been a popular idea in Russia. It's always been affiliated with things that many people dislike. Change, diversity, foreign influence. People fear what they don't understand. And the Russian people are particularly short up on understanding. But it doesn't have to be that way. People can learn, change their ways, and open their minds, but it cannot be forced upon them. That is what traditional socialists always fail to understand. Some measures of top-down change is necessary. But the transformation of society they sought could never be forced upon an unwilling populace. Perhaps it will take a century to achieve our ideal, maybe more, but no matter what comes, no matter what future generations choose, we have done the right thing and given hope to a generation born with none of it. Um, you know what? Let's go for construction speed. I want to build as fast as possible. And Goring won the Civil War if we don't, if you don't remember. So yeah, it's gonna be kind of wild. What a wild man down there. And I do apologize for t talking fast. I just, I, I'm a fast talker. So the Russian economy. There's nothing much to recommend about the Russian economy, such as it is. We have plenty of natural resources and a large population, but lack the means to take advantage of them. What well, little industry we inherited from the Soviets is variously outdated or run down or just plain broken. That's to say nothing of the complete lack of international trade, a staple of modern economics. Thankfully, President Kosygin is an old hand at this sort of thing and knows just the people to help draft a plan for the new economy. It won't be easy. Even the fundamentals of our economy are lacking and many crucial sectors are non-existent. We're starting from nothing, but perhaps that'll be for the best. Better to be free of old burdens entirely than to ban bear their expenses. 
Less growth. Base is plus 10%, but base here is... Huh. 5% more output. Yeah, I get more output. And max factor. Oh, yeah, definitely max factors in a state. The March of Progress. <clears throat> the towns were changing in Russia. Across the country, people were getting to know their neighbors again. In the city halls and local markets, on trains, buses, and taxis, Russians were meeting each other again and talking to each other one more another freely than they ever had before. As the refurbished roads and railways knit the country back together, they spread people, ideas, and goods around the vast country. From coffee shops, libraries, and nascent universities, ideas flowed uh, to a public rapidly learning to discuss them openly. From factories and workshops rushing them the foreign goods that flowed to city shops, town squares, and village markets in a public eager to purchase them. And from citizen to citizen, to the benefit of all, was provided the basic needs of life. The country could only be great if it was good for all, only strong if it protected the weak. There was much still left to do, and with the road being long and hard, but what we have suffered to come here will drive us onward. Our achievements will spur us to reach new heights. We will continue our march together towards a better future and establish economic zones. The finer details of economic recovery are for aspiring entrepreneurs and workers to manage. Free enterprise will take care of the groundwork. The state's role, meanwhile, must be to direct development and the most efficient direction possible. To that end, our territory will be divided up into economic zones, regions where the economy will be organized by the government along the necessary lines. This way, we can avoid situations where prime agricultural land is given over to industry, where areas rich in resources are allocated to farmers. Let's do both if you can. I don't really care at this point. Get as much as you possibly can done. That's all that matters to me right now. Just get it done, 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 done. We don't have enough divisions, but that's okay. And actually, can we influence? Yes. Extra influence. Good. There are three rolls. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Thank you. More free infrastructure? Yes, please. Increase investment? Yes. Increase investment? Yes. We get a launch military intervention, but a lot of you guys, like, a lot of the comments from last, yesterday's video were for me to, me to peacefully integrate or annex these guys. So we'll do. I'll do the best we can, so... So we're good for now. We're getting more and more investments. And these guys are still killing each other, but they're not really killing each other, which is fun with us. Establish economic zones. Market day. Zora could hardly contain her excitement. She waited a whole week since the last market day, and finally the next had come. For most of her young life, the weekly trip to the town market had been something to avoid. The shopkeepers had been hostile and the hoppers angry. Arguments over weights and prices often turned into scary shouting matches around her. That scary market was now firmly a thing of the past, at least to Zora. For the first time she could remember, the face of goods were plentiful. There were more smiles to be seen, fewer arguments, and most importantly, a plethora of new faces, stalls, and goods on offer. It seemed very everyday. Market day was something new to see, smell, or taste. The shower mug she shared with her father last week still made her mouth water just thinking about it. As they walked to the town square, she was running circles around her mother, nipping impatiently at her coat. Once the market came into view, her mother gave her a warm smile and a small coin. Run along, Azlu, or Alusu, and enjoy yourself. From me and... Find me in the front of the old Mustafev's stall in an hour's time. The words are barely left her mouth before the girl is running full sprint off to find another excited girls and boys to see, smell, taste, and experience everything in ten kopecks could buy. I'll take a hot bun, no wait, a chalk chalk. Cool. Rapidly improve. Oh my goodness. Um, Fuel cells are not bad either. Elite tax exemptions. Ooh. I don't, like that. I don't mind that one. Poverty get, rapidly get better. Agriculture? Well, I guess we're going to focus on agriculture first. It doesn't really matter. The contract responsibility system. Every past Russian government has attempted to achieve agricultural efficiency, but none ever met with success. The feudal nature of the empire meant that any proposed reform would have to wrangle the indolent, greedy landowners. The Bolsheviks, on the other hand, cared more about having an ideological acceptable system than a fair or functioning one. This has made famine a recurring or severe threat to our people. The contract con responsibility system will ensure a stable food supply and good income for rural populations by giving parcels of land to groups of farmers. This will minimize competition over land. Additionally, this will accept taxation and grain and subsidize other crops. Increase relations as much as possible. Nice. And neutral receptive. Good. Very good. Ah, look at all this stuff. Even more, 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 more. We're going to turn this into a, an economic juggernaut, hopefully, by the end of this. Then again, we're going to have a lot of dead soldiers. Just saying, we fight the Germans. If I remember to put on the second West Russian war mod. Should be good. Should be good, though. Nice. Aid for the farmers. The current generation of Russian farmers have been building up their livelihoods from nothing. Mechanization was never a priority for the Bolsheviks, and the short-lived war economy only made their situation worse. Most farmers still work the land in the same manner as countless generations of peasants did. To feed a growing population, our agricultural capacity needs to catch up with the modern world. For that to happen, every farmer will need the tools and equipment to match his or American Japanese his American or Japanese counterpart. Though some economic chaff at this uh, thought. We'll have to instate massive discounts to make this possible. Not an easy easy solution, but a smart one in the long term. Will we lose recruitable population factor? Focus on education. Uh, 
I'll be honest, this stuff could wait. It's not extremely important right now. I mean, don't get me wrong, we still need to do it. It'll be good to do, but still. Still. You guys. Oh, are you guys done making stuff? You're not done. You are far from it. Oh, hello. Who died? Hungry? Oh, Moscow Tummy. Nice. Very good. Aid for the farmers. The Russian Republican Army. The opening of Russia. Russia is a land of bounty, but that doesn't have everything we need. More specifically, it doesn't have capital. Most of what little wealth exists is in the hands of governments, or bar a few particularly miserly individuals. With a nation in the state, it's now. It is now. There's only one place for us to turn. Foreign capital must flow into the country. With it will come knowledge, innovation, and technology. All three will improve our economy with alcatracy. Given the disparity in development, it'll be a long time before we can break through the glass ceiling into the upper echelon of global economic powers, but catching up will suffice for now. If you're about to decrease the poverty, please go right ahead. Beautiful. And this whole free trade thing is not great, but it's not bad. All but you and you. A for the farmers. Opening of Russia. Anything else here yet? Oh, yes. Receptive align. Nice. Increase opponents. Opponents' influence is nothing. Uh, do this one first. The development industry sector. Naturally, industrialization will be a priority for us. The great nations of the world moved on from agrarianism decades, if not centuries ago. Attempts were made by past governments, but the scale of industry found in Germany or Britain was never replicated here. By offering to establish production facilities catering to foreign markets, we can become a workshop of the world. Given the less developed state of Russia, goods can be produced here at a low cost compared to, for example, the U.S. Basic goods from Russia exported and mass might not be glamorous, but if it works, well, it works. Good. Good, good, good. How do we have our sphere? We need more influence, though. We just gotta wait. Oh, hello. Oh, Germany's going to war with them. Oh, boy. Goring. How much man... We've got quite a good amount of manpower, so we'll see how... we got a lot of divisions. Holy crap. There we go. And now they're in our sphere. Good. Now, follow it up with what? Exploit southern oil reserves. Oil is the lifeblood of nations and the foundation of many economies. Our reserves might not be the vast as those of Venezuela or the Arab nations, but we have plenty of fuel to, uh, for our own economic growth. We have enough, in fact, that exports are a viable option. No doubt some nations will be grateful to have a source that isn't in the pocket of an existing superpower. Reserves already exist in Samara. The Urals and Tatarstan, a decent straw, will need the to drill deeper to find enough for a prospering oil industry. Expansion of existing facilities is a given. We can also look into more opportunities as we expand into Siberia. Just beyond our borders, there could be enough oil to make us a top competitor in the energy business. If you want to get better research facilities, please go right ahead. Beautiful. Nice. Beautiful. Better truckerinos, baby. So how much are we missing? Just uh, just tons of artillery. Just it's just so much already needed, man. Oh, integrate these guys, yeah. That'd be good. Puyi's gone, unfortunate for that dude. But comprehensive refinement programs. Exporting crude oil is a good business, but it could be better. Because it's refined overseas, we're missing out on a large portion of the profits from the finished product. It'd be a lot more profitable to refine our oil here in Russia before exporting a usable product. We might sell a little less, but the overall profits will be much higher. With these increased profits, we can follow the lead of the Arabs and begin massive investment programs to bring our nation into the modern era. It's a seller's market, and we're selling at very affordable prices. Black gold will succeed where real gold cannot, and with it, we will buy our way into the future. Nice. Gossigen or announces retirement. What? 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 What do you mean? Earlier today, President Alexei Gossigen announced that he would not seek a re-election upon the expiration of his current term, and would instead be retiring from political life. In a brief speech, Gossigen made the proclamation while speaking about his personal political journey, from the time spent in the Soviet state apparatus to the, the, his arrival in the Republic and later foundation of the Young Reformers. He extorted the. Uh, Republican Assembly to remain true to their principles of democracy and the liberalism on which he was elected, and emphasize to the eventual success of the importance of rejecting radicalism of all types within the national political discourse. He subsequently ended his speech with thanks to his many political allies and other con uh, confederates. 
Well, some experts have correctly theorized the purpose of Kosygin's speech must appear to have been taken by some degree of surprise. Whatever the criticisms held by opponents held by opponents against Kosygin, and they were many, although all could generally agree that he had long desired to see political stability in the Republic. Whether the race for the presidency, which has been galvanized by the announcement, will possess such stability is currently unknown. The end of an era. Lesson from the last war. Ooh. Lessons from Unification Wars. Ooh, I think we gotta go tactical flexibility. Yeah. yeah we got we definitely gotta go that way, so. Hmm. Foreign investment incentives. Some ardently patriotic types argue against it, but one cannot deny the efficacy of foreign investment. Granted, it tends to be the government rather than the citizens who benefit financially, but does it really matter right now? We should take any opportunity to further our own economic growth, no matter how, whether it offends all ideologues or in a few proud politicians. Labor incentives and tax breaks are all one usually needs to get foreign investors interested. We offer both to corporations who open branch offices in Western Russia, as well as those who partner with the Russian companies. They work for, uh, for the rest of the world, and we can work for us too. If you want about the Euro League accepting integration, please go right ahead. They know what's best for them. Ah, it's so beautiful. Oh my goodness. Absolutely beautiful, my friends. Hi, oh Hitler. Who said hi, oh Hitler? Wasn't me. Nice, my friends. Beautiful. Managerial socialism is not bad either. Nice. Foreign investment in incentives. Very good stuff. Extraction. Um, maybe we get some better artillery. We're using like stuff from like World War Two and stuff. So honestly, at this point, just just go like all here. I don't really care. And then, managerial socialism. Our free market reforms move away from the Bolsheviks should not be misinterpreted. misinterpreted. The president is still in his heart a socialist. However, we, we might still aspire to socialist ideals. We're not blinded by ambition or ideological fanaticism. Socialism cannot be forced. It must be born naturally, coaxed gently into being with the consent of voters. To this end, we've adopted the principle of managerial socialism. Our economy will be regulated and structured in a manner that avoids the pitfalls of liberal capitalism while still enjoying its benefits eventually. So the thinking goes. It will progress into a state wherein a peaceful transition to a true socialism will occur naturally, without the need for bloodshed and, of course, tyranny. Eight billion, huh? That's quite a bit. But we're building up, honestly, pretty darn quickly. And when we're done, we'll continue building up more roads. Right? Right. Right. No matter how much blood we paid for all this territory. Ah. Oh. And we shall conclude with Project Ki Kiver Sin. The field of computing has expanded dramatically in the past few decades. The pre resident computer scientists were stunned to learn what kind of advances have been made by the great powers. There's been even some discussion of the possibility that computers will be used in virtually every profession in a few decades. If you want to about fear and loathing LA, please go right ahead. President Kosygin is most interested, or has gathered, the Republic's small clique of computer scientists in the capital today. Together, they have devised Prez a Project Kyberson, an astoundingly ambitious yet achievable plan to revolutionize the economy. This will involve establishing computer hubs placed in key locations around the country. Able to process information at lightning speed, they will provide us with the most centralized and efficiently managed economy in the world, at least once we have the technology. But, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, when we will have elections, and see what happens with the rest of... Western Siberia. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.